Hello again. Um, we had a little trouble with the previous version of this assignment, so I'm doing it again. We'll see what happens. I may have to break it into two parts. Um, if you double-click your icon, and instead of doing it today, I'm being sneaky, and I'm just bringing it over onto the page that we don't have to wait for the boot. We're going to draw an object today, and one of the things we're going to do is we're going to build a title block. Um, but basically, we're going to learn to mess with some of these objects. we got lines polylines, circles, arcs. We click down here, we've got rectangles or polygons, different types of ellipses, and what's called hatch. Um, and we'll mess with a little bit of each of these. I'm going to do lectures on each singular um, command. Um, so like there'll be little quickie tutorials. Um, if you're familiar with the little tutorials that SketchUp does, it'll be similar to that. But I'm working on those. I haven't got them yet. But for right now, um, line is pretty simple. You pick two points, and it'll click. And it'll keep going. Um, if you want it to go straight sideways or up and down, that's the F8 button. That's ortho. Um, you'll notice that if we hit the F3 button, that's the object snaps. We can turn those on and off. Object snaps jump to things like endpoints, midpoints, intersections. Circles have quadrants uh, at the 0, 90, 180, and 270 mark. A lot of different objects have a lot of different snap points. And I've, I, I don't know if I've, you may be getting inside of order. Um, my office has an issue with the uh, solenoid going bad. So if you hear this funny sound that sounds like tape being pulled off a big packing tape dispenser, that's solenoid in our, our attic, or above our ceiling. Um, so lines are pretty straightforward. They're not too hard to mess with. Most people can mess with lines pretty easily. Polylines we'll talk about later in another episode. Polylines, the difference between a polyline, if I drew basically the same thing we kind of drew here. Oops, let me turn my ortho off kind of draw the same thing but just a little bit outside of it you'll notice with the line command they're just individual pieces with the polyline command it's one big object they're all connected um, there's some other aspects about polylines we'll talk about later but that's kind of the difference between the two so if we went to erase and we just pick on this line, it just erases one line. If we go to erase a polyline, it erases everything. But what I decided, oops, I really didn't want to erase that. One of the things you can do is a command called undo. Just hit U for undo. And you can keep undoing all the way to the beginning of the drawing, just about. Um, but if you want to undo one too many times, you can do what's called redo. But you can only redo once. So if I Let's hit undo, and I go, oh, I didn't mean to undo the polyline. I type redo, it brings it back. If most software has something similar, so you're probably fairly familiar with this concept. Um, in the case of circles, circles give you a number of different ways to enter it. It defaults to giving the center point and then asking you for the radius. You can hit B when those case was, and you can force it to give you the diameter. You can pick. Um, different points, but let's just start with the center one. We'll just go center, and we want a six inch radius, so we'll put six. Boop, there's our circle. If we wanted a six inch diameter, we start circle, pick our center point. You'll notice down here one of your options is D for diameter, so that's kind of blue. Hit D, and then we have a six inch. Uh, oops, it prompts us for diameter instead of radius now, and there we go. Um, Another option is like two points or three points. So if we had a, if we wanted a circle that went from there to there, we could hit two P because that's the part that's blue. Um, whoops. I, sorry, you can tell I don't do it very often. Circle, two point. Um, we pick our two points, boop, and it brings it between them. If you had started the circle command, oops, circle, and we had to enter it down here, we'd hit that 2P, and then we'd have snapped to those two locations. 
So if you pick it, if you pick the option up here, you don't have to pick the two P down there. I ultimately would prefer you don't be picking up here. You don't want to get carpal tunnel. If you can do everything from the command line, you're better off. Um, we're going to talk some strategies about how to make that even easier later. But for right now, um, it's best to kind of know what the command line is telling you and to input stuff there instead of constantly going back and forth. Um, I've had carpal tunnel in both wrists, so trust me, you don't want to get that. Arcs are pretty simple. Um, it defaults to where you can just pick three points and it'll draw an arc between those two. You have options to, you know, draw an arc. Um, let's say we start here. We can tell it from this point, okay, and I want the center to be here. So C for center, and that's my center. And then I can turn it. You'll notice it always tries to turn them counterclockwise. So if you're trying to make an arc to go the other direction and you pick the wrong endpoint, you're kind of stuck usually. So think about in the terms of what your points are for arcs. You've noticed you've got start pull downs that give you a number of different options. Start in direction, that's a way to fix what I was just talking about. Start in angle, you could pick a point, a start point, an end point until it, you want to be 90 degrees. So there's a number of options here. I'll go through all of those in one of those little videos specifically for each of the uh, commands, so the arc command. Rectangles we use a lot. It's pretty simple. You pick two corners and you draw a rectangle between them. Ellipses are kind of like squished circles. Um, so if you have a, um, like if we pick this as our center point for that ellipse, and we pick that as one radius, you can see how we can get that kind of this funny squashed circle. Um, another option that ellipses have is you could like just an elliptical arc. So you'll define a center and then two points and it'll define an arc, uh, an elliptical arc between them. Finally, there's hatch. And hatch, you notice when you click that, suddenly this whole toolbar has changed. Um, we have, let's, let me drag this out. It'll, cause you'll, you'll have this. So you'll see all these other things. Let's go back to hatch. Um, so you'll see the patterns. When I had it compressed down, the patterns were, weren't being displayed. So we have a whole bunch of different patterns that we can scroll through and gradient patterns. Um, and you can down, there's a whole bunch of these available for free on the internet too. Um, there's also some for pay, but here we'll pick this net three. Um, at this point, if you pick inside a space, you can, it'll show you, you know, if you hover over space, it'll show you how it would fill it. But if you click inside it, that kind of sets that space. This is pretty dense. Let's change it. Let's make it eight. And now you can see it a little bit because it's making each of those spaces eight times bigger than it was a minute ago. And once it, you get it the way you like it, so I can still come back here and make it 10 now. Um, once you get it the way you like it, just hit enter. And that's kind of how hatch works. For today, we're going to make this tire block using rectangle and a text command. Um, if you want to save the doodles you've made so far, go ahead and hit file save as and call them something else. Um, if you haven't called today's drawing assignment two, go save as, let's call it assignment two. Um, I've already got one, but let's go ahead. Um, I'll just overwrite it real quick, so save. And it's gonna prompt me, hey, you wanna delete this? In this case, yeah, sure I do. Um, now at this point, I want to get rid of all this stuff because we just wanna have this, we don't want all this stuff. Um, you can go erase. The shortcut for erase is E. Remember, we've got what is called a selection window. If you pick and go to the right, the selection window only takes the objects completely within that window. Okay. If you start from and go to the left, it's what's called a crossing window. Again, it's, you may be familiar with this and from other software. Um, a crossing window takes anything inside it or that it crosses. And so you could, that's typically how we'll go and delete stuff was like this. One sneaky thing, if you grab everything and hit the delete key on your keyboard, that also works. You don't have to use the erase key. 
Um, you could also have hit E and typed in all. And that'll highlight everything and then hit enter and you're good. So we're gonna start by making a title block for an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So we'll use the rectangle command, the shortcut for rectangle, because the actual command is rectangle, not rectangle. The actual short, the shortcut for it is REC. And we'll tell it we wanna go from zero comma zero, fixed point in space, that's that little origin right there. And from there we wanna go 8.5, because the sideways direction is always first, and comma 11. And there's my 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. If you've got something like this, and you're like, I drew it, but it's not here. Remember, with zoom, Z is a shortcut, you can go to E for extents, or all. So we'll hit E, and it'll zoom up and go, oh. I didn't know where it was. Uh, you may also draw it, and you're like, I know I just drew it, what's going on? Um, and one thing you notice, look at the little origin thing here. It keeps snapping to the middle. That's because telling me that the zero comma zero point is outside where I can see right now. Zoom extents, and it'll bounce me out, and I can find where I'm supposed to be. Now we could figure out the math that, okay, we want a quarter inch border here. And so we could do figure out the math to figure out where this point is relative to this and all this other stuff. But there's a much easier way of doing that. There's a command called offset. And what offset does is it makes a parallel copy of whatever you ask at the distance you tell it. So if we hit offset, O-F-F-S-E-T is the actual, whoops, I can type, really I can. Offset's the actual command. O is the shortcut. And then it asks you for the distance. In our case, we want a quarter inch offset, so one quarter, or you could have put 0.25. And then pick the object, and then it's going to ask you to pick the side you want. You notice it'll let us go to the outside or to the inside. We want it to the inside, so click somewhere on the inside. It'll let you keep doing it. We don't want to do it anymore, so hit escape. And now we're going to make some rectangles. Um, so let's go rectangle for REC. We'll click that with our object snaps, that F3 button, and we'll go 1.5 comma 0.5. And I'm not sure this is the right distance. I'll have to, let me go look real quick. That's terrible. Distance. Y'all don't know this yet. Distance. One and three quarters. Ah, that's where I went wrong. And you'll notice you can have multiple drawings up at the same time. I, we haven't actually talked about that yet, but a lot of times you want to bounce back and forth. So back to assignment two, and I screwed that one up, so let's delete it. So rectangle, 1.75 comma 0.5. Sorry about that. Um, now I could do the rectangle command again, 1.75.5, 1.75.5, 1.75.5. Or I could use copy. Copy, the, the shortcut is CO, or CP. Pick your object, and in this case, we need to pick a point. That's a cloud base point. And think about the base point. You've got to be able to, you don't want to pick here, because then how do you get it to line up? There's nothing to snap to over here, right? So we want to go copy. Let's pick this corner, because then we can snap to that, and we can snap to that, and we can snap to that. Makes it very quick. Um, this last little rectangle here is a one by one rectangle. So we go rectangle, one comma one. And for the very last one, we could figure out exactly how big that is and do our math, but we don't have to. We can go rectangle, snap to that point, and snap to this point. Ding! Yay! So, these rectangles, that first one was one and three quarters over and a half inch up. I probably should have had that dimension on your little drawing here. Sorry about that. Um, now it's time to do the text. The first thing you have to do with text is create a style. There's a default style. 
um, but it's really not the best. Sometimes it'll substitute Arial, sometimes it's this really ugly stick one. But we're going to start by typing style. That brings up into the dialog box. It shows what may be defaulted in the in the drawing. You may not have anything. I think mine may have be set to have more than yours does. We're going to create one called Roman. I know you probably don't have Romans, so we're going to create one. Let me delete it real quick. Oops. Oh, that's my default style, so it's not letting me. Um, so let's just make standard current. Now let's see if it'll let me delete it. No. Um, well, anyway, we'll just go make one. Um, see, because I, I, I did this the other day, and then the sound went out, so now I'm using that file, and it's got all this stuff in it. Um, we'll make a new one. We'll make it Roman T, but you all need to make Roman S. So we'll hit new Roman And when you're making these, always name it the same thing. Because like if we click on it now, why is it not letting me go to font? Oh, um, you always want to have your text style. You don't have to. I could have called it Bob. Um, but you want to have to be the same thing that the font name is. Like you have a Rocky Horror font. Ooh. Um, if I was going to assign that to a stick style, I'd want to call it Rocky or something. So if I send this file to a client that doesn't have this, they at least have some idea what to search for. Because um, if they don't have this font, and these TT fonts are the ones that are from Windows, the true type fonts, you'll notice some of them like Romans um, or .shx. This is a compiled shape file that's really old, dates back to when AutoCAD started. Um, so in your case, you want to create Romans. You want Romans.shx, and you want the width to be 0.75. Do not give it a height. Um, if you all, your office or your um, client or even your school district may want you to be using the true type fonts, there's a whole bunch of these out there on the internet, and they're all for free. So there's options there. But we're going to use this Romans one because it comes with AutoCAD. I know everybody's got it. Go down in the font list, you'll find Romans. Click on it, put 0.75 for the width. Leave that height zero. That becomes a big issue when we get to dimensioning later. Once you get all that, hit set current and close. Sorry, I know this is kind of roundabout. I'll try to redo this and clean it up for future people, but for right now, for the school district that I'm working on, they found out that the sound got messed up on the previous one. Um, hopefully the style is, the sound is still working. I'm going as quickly as possible to see what we can do. If you think it was a file size problem. Now we're going to put some text right here that says um, assign, uh, drawing title. The command to create text is text. Wow, this is really, you could also come and pick it here. But we're going to do it from the command line, text. Pick a point down in here. You're going to have to move it anyway because this is not really where the text itself starts. It's a point off of, off of it called an insert point. But we'll just pick here. Um, it asks us for the height. We want one tenth for the height. Asks us for the rotation angle. Normal text that we can read is zero, so we hit enter or zero. But you notice zero down here, you notice zero is the default, so we can just hit enter. And now we can start typing. So we want to put put your caps lock on. Drawing. Oops, I already had mine on. I turned it off. Drawing title and a colon. And now we have to do that for all these others. Like drawn by, checked by, date, class, assignment. Except you're better off not. And here's why. If we went to do another one down here, it's going to be slightly not in exactly the same location this one is away from that intersection, and it's going to look awful. To fix that, we'll use copy, and we'll grab that one, use this intersection as the base point, snap to this intersection, and we could have, and I should have just kept going, let's do that, just stick it everywhere it's supposed to go. 
And of course, someone out there is like, Mr. Lane, Mr. Lane, these don't say the right thing. Well, the good news is it's very easy to edit text in AutoCAD. Um, the actual command is DD edit. There's a number of different types, like there's also a T edit. But you don't have to type that. All you have to do is come over here, hover over it, and double click. And you notice how it kind of brings it up in this funny box. So if I just put drawn by right now, it just replaces it. That you don't have to do that. You can come here and click and like if I you know, that was supposed to be an S, I can fix it this way, you know, whatever we need to do. Um This is a very fast way of putting a whole bunch of text down rather than starting from the text command every single time. So it's something to uh, something to remember is to use this DD edit aspect um, to do that. And this this one is assignment. Whoops, I didn't get over. I don't mean to make er mistakes all the time. It's probably good so that you realize that it's not too hard to fix the things you kind of mess up. If you ever start halfway through a command and things happen, just hit your escape to get out of it. Um, once you've got this, go up here to File, Save As, call it Assignment 2. Um, you probably have already done that. Um, if you have, you don't really have to do Save As. You can just do Save or type QS, which stands for Quick Save and you're good. Um, once you've done that, you're done.